This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us. With me today is John Cameron, and from an island somewhere in the world is Mr. Richard Fields. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. All right. Looking in the uh, low of 78, high of 82 sunshine. Yeah. Uh, speaking about being cold in California, lawmakers, uh, FBI and lawmakers, are in disagreement over the how to classify the FBI no, attempted assassination of Republican baseball players. Remember a few years ago there was that issue where a, a Bernie supporter yeah. shot up yeah. a Republican baseball player team. And oh, so yeah. he shot up a, a, a congressional baseball uh, – or, 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 yeah, I guess a baseball game where yeah. members of Congress – uh, Republicans versus Democrats fight it out on the ball field, and somebody took a pot shot at him. I, he, he, was it, it was a Bernie supporter. I've forgotten about that. Yeah, it was it was a Bernie supporter, hardcore yeah. Bernie supporter, and it was at a Republican practice, so it wasn't like he attacked both Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Okay. Well, the F, what the FBI has declared it a suicide by cop. Yeah, really, rather than a terrorist act. So yeah, despite but, the fact that he had a list of people he wanted to assassinate and all that, and yeah, he had a they called it suicide by cop. And he asked. Did he, did, did, did he get killed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's you know, it's foregone conclusion, right? Well, then you know that means that everybody who assassinates anybody who doesn't get arrested is suicide by cop. So I yeah. don't think that. And the fact that he asked whether uh, the people were Republicans or Democrats before he went back to his was did he have a van or a car? I think it was a van to get his weapons. Uh, and when they said Republicans, he went and got the, the weapons. I don't know if they said Democrats if he'd have still done it, but it you know it's pretty obvious that it was uh, it was attempted assassination of Republicans. And I can understand people's urges to shoot people from either side of the congressional aisle, but it's not something you should do. Well, I, yeah, I mean, no, I I, I don't think we I, no violence against even politicians is not really called for. But no, I, I agree. I agree. I can understand the urge, but you know, I, people, I have the urge to have a second piece of pie often, and I, I don't. I have one piece of pie, and sometimes I have no pie, you know, because I'm trying to eat healthy and clean. So when you have the urge to shoot congressmen, you should go, oh, no, I shouldn't do that. And, and people who don't are. I think you can pretty much say insane. So, well, uh, or, 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 you know, uh, political assassins. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds to me like more of an assassination attempt with a it's sort of it's sort of like the, the Islamists who uh, will conduct a suicide bombing. They know they're going to kill a whole bunch of people. They know they're going to die in the process. Uh, and dying in the process is just, you know, their gate to uh, nirvana. Mm -hmm. uh, and presumably this guy uh didn't, either didn't care that he was uh, going to die in the whole uh, process or was deranged enough to think that he could escape, or uh, who knows. Hmm. He might not even have thought about it. He says, I'm gonna, just going to go shoot some people. He fired off probably... uh, over 100 rounds, and he wounded some people pretty seriously. I don't think anybody died. A congressman almost bled out. That's the one. That was Steve Scalise, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and then he was in... Uh, in rehab for a very long time, and and uh, so, you know, pretty obvious that that's, uh, you know, if you're going to classify anything drum up. as terrorism, you should classify that as terrorism. But they call obviously it the guy was just trying to drum up support among Republicans for gun control. Yeah, well, and this is the thing: it's I'm not a fan of calling it terrorism. I wouldn't call it terrorism, but it is left wing extremism, and we're refusing to call left wing extremism left wing extremism. When we have no problem calling right wing extremism right wing extremism, it's mm. it's almost yeah, as if left wing extremism somehow doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and well, the libertarian you know, point of view is that you should not be using force, particularly uh, lethal force, to enforce your political views, whatever uh, they are, no matter how good or abhorrent they are. I I'll agree with that. We've agreed on something today, Richard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can agree on the Postal Service checking our social media posts for inflammatory rhetoric. And then they pass this information off onto our, uh, what, what, what do you say, the intelligence agencies. 
Well, that's where the uh, that's where the the, the analogy of uh, force breaks down because there is no force in inflammatory words. There is no force involved in saying what the heck you believe or what you think or what you know, no matter how well informed or wrong you are. The 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 antidote to incorrect or false or misleading speech is more speech, not less speech. Not you don't try to shut down bad speech, you try to counter it with good speech. That's what the First Amendment is all about. And when we have agencies like, for, for Pete's sake, the post office getting into the censorship business, what's that all about? I mean, uh, I know that 1984 Big Brother watching you is, uh, you know, is is creeping up upon us, but enlisting the, uh, the uh, uh, less than competent folks at the post office kind of is, uh, help, not helping their cause much. Well, maybe this is why the post office can't deliver the mail. They're too busy reading our social media posts. Maybe they should focus on actually delivering mail. They, I th they, they deliver mail sometime. I mean, when you when you go anywhere else in the world, even even uh, centrally managed post offices, I think they still deliver mail twice a day in, in most of England. And, uh, you know, the first batch of mail comes through at about 10. They might be down to one time. One time a day. But um, yeah, the post office, I, I think if you're running a deficit to, uh, to provide the service, which isn't the best service in the world that they're running, they probably shouldn't be spending uh, their subsidized tax dollars on uh, tracking what people say on social media. Uh, that seems there, like there, a there, pretty heavy waste there, of resources. There are a number of mistakes that were made in the drafting of the Constitution. And establishing a post office was one of the one of the primary well, one of the lesser lesser mistakes, but still a mistake. Uh, there's no reason in the world why the government has to be involved in delivering mail or uh, delivering anything else for that matter. Well, oddly um, enough, it, it's it required them to establish a post office. It didn't require them to maintain it for off forever and perpetuity. Yeah, they but can no, set opening, it up and walk away. Opening the door to uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, expansion means the door will never shut. And that they open the door to bureaucratic uh, uh, expansion with uh, with the uh, post office clause. What they should do, or what we should do at this point is say, okay, the post office is, you know, is in the constitution. Eh, constitution, going to the trouble of having a constitutional amendment to get rid of it is probably not worth the trouble because it's not, not that big a deal, but we should allow unfettered, totally unconstrained competition to the post office. That's well, not yeah. happening. Yeah, there's no reason you can't you can't just declare that you know the postal service becomes a competitive nature. You can set up a, a competitive system. Uh, yeah, very easily for the post office. I mean, you just have in, to do in, it. in overnight service, FedEx, UPS uh, have have done it and effectively uh, uh, made the post office more uh, competitive, more uh, effective in doing overnight and two-day delivery, which is a good thing. Uh, competition is the antidote to any bad government agency to let them compete with other folks in the free market. If they're good, uh, free market competition is not going to be a problem for them. If they're not good, then they should uh, see their services wane and wither into the, into the, uh, into the ether. And now, well, with, the, Oh, sorry, John, go ahead. Well, you know, the, the whole idea that of the post office at first was, you know, wonderful in one way, not having the government do it, but the idea that, that anybody in the country uh, could communicate with anybody else in the country was the idea behind the post office. And, and because it was set up that way, then, the, you know, because the parameters it was set up with built in some horrific costs. You know, if you have these isolated settlements somewhere that needed, for example, Pony Express, then, you know, especially during the westward expansion, places in Alaska and all the rest of that, uh, the, the post office operated under the requirement that everybody should have postal service or needed postal service. And um, that, you know, led to some, some pretty inefficient operation. Now you have this thing called the Internet and you have this thing called the, the phone. And, uh, and so the idea that everybody needs to be able to communicate with everybody else that's a good thing, but 
it's not required that somebody physically carry something from Nome, Alaska to Maine. Yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 the, uh, the reason for a monopoly on the on the post office never did exist, and for yeah. the people who think it did, DocuSign has uh, eliminated that eliminated yeah. that reason for a monopoly. Yeah, no and then I'm, yeah, for a postal monopoly and. Yeah. Any monopoly, the only monopolies that gain traction are those that are either started by the government and are government uh, monopolies, in fact, or they are de facto government monopolies like uh, like uh, utilities and uh, phone companies and, and, and the like. Well, we're going to have to point out here this the thing that America is founded on inflammatory rhetoric. With common sense was distributed through the postal service of the time, such as it was, and common sense is one of the most most inflammatory documents to ever be distributed in American history. And Thank you, Thomas Paine. This notion that we, you know, our, our government should be looking out for inflammatory posts against the government is kind of absurd in the United States of America. It's, it's yeah. The whole concept is kind of absurd. Yeah. Agreed. And, I think we beat the post office to, well, it's already <laughs> dying, so we don't need to beat it to death. Yeah. yeah. We can move on. From yeah. The, in New Mexico, the widow of a slain officer is suing the United States government because they they sent this poor the what was it the DEA ATF oh god I forget which which alphabet agency it maybe it doesn't even matter Heartland Security I think yeah they sent this poor officer in to do a, a what they call a soft stop find some reason to stop this hardened criminal that we know is is has a bunch of guns on him stop him find some excuse to stop him and see if you can find some reason to to arrest him. And of course it went south. The, the guy got shot and they were there in battle uniforms, essentially in full their gear in 30 seconds. So they were essentially around the corner. They knew this guy was dangerous because they had themselves all laid out in their battle gear for it. And they sent this poor police officer, just normal average beat cop, essentially in, into his death. It was insane. Did you, uh, I know, Richard, you didn't get a chance to read it, but John, did you get a chance to follow, read, check out? Yeah, all the yeah, I did, and it's 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 typical. I as I thought of it, I tried to remember the Oklahoma City bombing and the you know all the stuff that came out after that. That uh, uh, I think it was either Homeland Security or DEA or ATF or somebody that had a uh, office in that building were suspiciously absent when the bomb went off, and there's been all sorts of rumors that it was a a, a sting gone wrong. And so um, I think we're going to talk about another sting in, in a bit. So it's, you know, you, you've got these, these, these people that militarize this country. You've got, uh, you know, these people with this, like, you call it tactical gear, uh, doing battle with either real or imagined enemies. And, you know, if the guy was a bad guy and, and he had, a, and, and he's got a bunch of guns, then, Guns in and of themselves are allowed by our constitution, so that's not a bad thing. So then he he must have been doing something else, I'd imagine. He's guilty of of some kind of crime, and and if there was that danger, they should have informed the cop, or better yet, they should have showed up not 30 seconds after the cop got shot, but three minutes before he got shot, so they could get shot. At. And I have a feeling if a bunch of uh, people in in uh, body armor with their helmets and their automatic weapons would have made the stop that the guy probably wouldn't have shot a cop. So that's what I'm guessing. And um, you know, if they're asking him to do a soft stop and 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 basically trump up some reason to to arrest this guy, it means they didn't really have uh, you know any any legal reasons for serving a warrant. Or arresting them themselves. They were. Well, you know, well they, want to, they want to protect their the way they get their information is what they're trying mm -hmm. to do. Is they have they've got all the information they want, but they want to protect how they get it. Mm -hmm. And so they send the cop in. Hopefully, they get a reason to search his car. And if they search the car, they get then they get all their all their um, evidence backwards. They've already got their evidence. They've already got mm -hmm. it through all their their spying and their drone snitches. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the, the correct procedure is to issue a warrant on the guy and uh, do the search. Uh, su suppose, you know, assuming that uh, whatever uh, ammunition and guns and whatnot that he had with him was in fact illegal. Uh, but then that, that begs two questions, whether or not a firearm sh should be illegal for essentially anybody. 
And secondly, it brings into question the, the whole idea of the fact that the, the whole three, three uh, felonies a day concept, which is the idea that all of us, I mean, all of us are guilty of uh, three felonies every day without even knowing about it. We can be pulled over for a, what is it, an air freshener dangling from a window and get shot. Uh, that happened recently. We can get pulled over for uh, an expired license tag. We can get pulled over for uh, having uh, windows that are not sufficiently uh, transparent, too, too, uh, too, much, uh, too much sunscreen on, on the windows. There's any LED. number of them. Yeah, I, have, I, have, I, I bought my car, and, and I'm sure if, if I were to you know, spend the time and money to, to look, my, the windows in the back of my car are too dark, and they're dark for a reason, because I transport my doggies in that car, and I don't want them to get too hot. But I guess I could take that out. But th again, there's... You know, there's there's all, so many laws and regulations and rules on the books, and unfortunately, uh, cops now instead of um, you know serving and protecting, protecting property and life, are are enforcing when they want to all these massive numbers of regulations. And you know, and typically, if people if if people uh, object to it, then they're resisting arrest. So you don't want to resist arrest in this country. That's where people get shot. But something needs to be done, and and if they had if they had valid reasons to stop this guy, why that why didn't they do it themselves? And yeah. shame shame on them for setting this guy up to get get killed. They didn't let him know how dangerous this guy was. If it was all that dangerous, then it, it means they had reasons themselves to make the arrest. So, uh, yeah, well, they you know, knew he was dangerous yeah. because they had him all set up. They were all prepared for something to go sideways, and mm -hmm. so when it went sideways. They all knew. And it's the question is, are we creating more of these terrorist attacks? As you know, we will skip down to the page here. After 9-11, authorities used informants to, to get secure, to get um, terror convictions, people who are allegedly planning terrorist attacks. But now we're finding out in the big expose in the New York Times, finding out that many of these terrorist attacks were all kind of created in the mind of the FBI. They kind of pushed these yeah, yeah. terrorist attacks on, and they got people who are, shall we say, simplistically minded, kind of got walked into creating a, a terror terror plot by the FBI. It's it's, it's absurd. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Actually, you take an FBI agent, gets on a message board or a, a Twitter storm, or or you know some you know find some simpleton that has a grudge, and then talk to the simpleton, talk him into doing something that it would be. Uh, terroristic and uh, and then arrest him uh, whenever whenever he uh, acts on it. It's it's uh, it's yeah. It makes this FBI statistics in combating terror quote unquote look good. It does absolutely nothing as far as uh, eliminating terror or violence of any kind. It's basically inciting it so that you can arrest it. Yeah, and a lot of times that I suspect as inefficient as as you know the FBI has proved itself to be. And everything other than covering its own backside, that uh, many times they, they set these people up and incite them and actually probably place, you know, weapons in their hands or plans in their hands. And and then they kind of forget to, to, to do the, the finish thing, which would be to actually protect people. I, I bet you if you drill down through all these FBI terror files, you'd find a couple of uh, incidents in our recent past where people have died because of it. And, um, you know, it, um, I think, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because occasionally I am, uh, this, this is entrapment. Isn't entrapment um, yes, pretty it's much entrapment. illegal in this well, you, country? You'd like to think so. Uh, yeah, they, they, they're skating between the lines. But, yeah, it's entrapment. Yeah. In the highlighted story, this guy actually – as he worked along, as the FBI was kind of dra essentially dragging him along this, this plot, he says, you know, but children might get hurt. I don't want to do this because children might get hurt. And yeah. So he was along the path. This, this kid was expressing, I need to ask my mother if I yeah. should be doing this. He literally asked, I need to ask my mother if I should do this. And they convinced yeah. him to, these FBI, they're not for helping our community. They're here for convicting people. And that's a mindset that has become very dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, agree. Yeah, they're trying to find criminals. They're looking for ways. While at the same time, 
they have an issue. Um, the tech crackdown, apparently the United States and our media is only a mad about, uh, oh, what is it? They're only mad about tech crackdowns when other countries do it. When the United States is, tech, is cracking down on tech companies, and you know the, and let's be honest, when the tech, when they crack down on tech companies, what they're really cracking down on is their users. They're not actually cracking down on the companies; they're cracking down on their users. But that's only okay in the United States. When other countries crack down on these tech companies or on their users, somehow the New York Times manages to understand that they're actually cracking down on their users. So yeah, you're missing a you're missing a very simple. Uh a distinction. The New York Times is not competing with uh, the uh, with uh, whoever is the the, uh, the tech platform in China or Myanmar. They are competing with Facebook for advertising dollars. So they conveniently ignore uh, the fact that Facebook is a competitor and, uh, and and decry that Facebook is not cracking down. Where whereas when it's uh, I forget I forget, uh, I forget the name of the of the of the uh, Ten cent or whoever it is in China, when it's when it's in China, then they ten cents on the competition for the New York Times, so they can uh, without any financial repercussions at all, they can they can ride their high horse. Well, and I read I I did read this article and and um, and it was I th I wish I had it right in front of me to do the direct quote. Let me see if I can get it. If you guys can bear with me for just a second here, because I, I it's entertaining as heck that. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm not, well, maybe I am. Just bear with me here. Well, why don't, I, I'm not going to get it because it'll take me too long. I apologize, folks, for listening to me blather uh, while, I'm, while I'm trying to be techy. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. I should have it ready. The, the language was ridiculous. It said, um, you know, there's tech, the, the uh, governments all over the world are, you know, uh, cracking down on, on tech companies. Whether it's for for useful purposes like we're doing here in the United States to counter terrorism and inflammatory speech, <laughs> or whether it's uh, you know a totalitarian regime cracking down on people exercising free speech in China, and it was that blatant of a uh, of a misthink, where basically you know if we do it here. And it's oh by the way they, they didn't they didn't put the word Republicans in there or or right wing people but they it was it was assumed then it's okay but if China does it uh, you know like they do to you know control their their tech people and to you know put down free speech then it's wrong and it was it was such a a uh, a blatantly um, misguided, illogical paragraph that I'm surprised that even in the new age of the New York Times it survived because it basically, it defied logic. And anybody who, who hasn't read the article, just, you know, uh, go to DuckDuckGo and uh, and oh, well, the, I'll, I'll, post them in, I'll post, the, I'll post yeah. the links in the description. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Get uh, post, post the links. It's, it's hilarious. It is hilarious <laughs> in, a, in a sick sort of way. Well, it, it's intellectual consistency is no longer required. Apparently, it's no. for, in the modern media. It's, yeah, especially I, in, uh, not you know, even the, in the, the same paragraph. You don't even need the yeah. same paragraph anymore. You used to, not, you know, maybe one article and, and then another. Okay, fine. But now it's in the same paragraph. Not same even, paragraph, same article. Not even different paragraphs of the same <laughs> article. I agree with you. It's the great lady is no longer a lady, and I can't use the other phrase that I was. Uh, I was going to use the gray lady is a is is now a a woman of the night who charges money. How about that? That's that's almost politically correct. All right, John, we're we're gonna we're gonna send John on to onto a rant here. The Obama admin an Obama administration scientist says the climate emergency is based upon a fallacy. All right, John, we got three three like three and a half minutes. So <laughs> that's, that's not enough time. But anyway, guy who worked for, he's a, he's a physicist, a PhD physicist. Uh, he's a numbers guy. And basically his job is to uh, in, uh, make science palatable for people. He worked for British Petroleum. I don't remember the guy's name, but he's, he's got a book coming up and we should probably plug this book. Uh, if you put a link into that article, that would be great. Because uh, it's certainly one I'm going to buy and read. 
and and uh, he was he he focused on numbers and science and making the the the, the actual numbers and actual science understandable to the public. And then he became involved uh, in climate science because it's all numbers. And if you look at numbers, you can even tell whether they're true or not and interpret from people. And he actually worked in the Obama administration. And then he started to, he, he came to a realization, like uh, uh, a, an epiphany, that he was uh, trying to uh, make numbers palatable for people so that he could understand climate science when there wasn't good science behind the numbers he was trying to explain to people that there were there are many conflicting uh, reports that the models people were quoting were flawed that the science behind uh, these these it had become politicized and he was selling something that basically didn't exist and he uh, uh, went on to to mention all the things that you've heard me rant about uh, there it is unsettled climate science tells us coming out in may and I'm going to buy the thing. Uh, maybe I'll send it to him, ask him to uh, 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 write a little something in it for me. Basically says that all these things are quoting about increased hurricanes and increased fires and all the rest of that stuff. And even basically uh, higher temperatures throughout the planet are, are non-existent. That it's that the science behind climate science is unsettled, is not settled at all. And you can't spend two trillion dollars combating something if you don't understand it to start with, which is what he's saying. Unfortunately, the political class, both left and right, but mostly left, has figured out that they can use fear almost indiscriminately. Ninety-nine percent of people recover from COVID, but we're still wearing masks and social distancing and having lockdowns in many places. 94% uh, of those over the age of uh, 65 survive uh, COVID, but uh, even you know that's a pretty good a uh, pretty good recovery uh, level. But nevertheless, uh, the uh, and even though that we're almost all old people at least vaccinated or uh, recovered, having uh, achieved herd humanity, we're still following Dr. Fauci's protocols. Mm -hmm. Same way with climate change. Uh, if you can believe, uh, cause people to believe that they're going to drown if they live in Miami, uh, that's a pretty good, a pretty potent fear uh, scenario to to lay out there. Uh, even though there, there is absolutely no basis, in fact, on it happening in, in anywhere close to the near future, mm -hmm. and very little basis, in fact, in uh, supposing it'll happen uh, in the distant future, and even less basis, in fact, in assuming that global warming, the, the idea that too much carbon dioxide is the cause other than other natural cycles of the planet and the, and the solar system. So we have uh, the unfortunate situation where the Al Gores uh, of the world and the Dr. Fauci's of the world have figured out that they can uh, scare us into doing pretty much any ridiculous thing. And they have been unfortunately successful. And I, I want to add something to that real super quick uh, for folks out oh, there. Oh, you got it. Hurry up. Yeah, Monitor Minimum. Look up, go to DuckDuckGo because it'll be hard to find on Google. Uh, put in the Monitor Minimum and, and look at uh, what you should really expect uh, with climate in the next 50 years in the world. It's, it's, uh, it's not a nice little warming where you can get rid of your sweater. It's, it's something not so good. Well, and that is all the time we have. And I would like to say, though, you know, living cleaner is a good thing, but there's a lot of money to be made in environmentalism. And that's mm -hmm. all the time we have from Libertarian Counterpoint. From all of us down here, please remember to love everybody.